You never forget the first time you fall in love. I was five years old in small town Mississippi, and I was with my mom at a garage sale, and I looked over and I see a black brownie Kodak camera amidst a bunch of household junk. And I knew I had to have this camera more than anything else I had ever wanted any more in the world. More than any Barbie doll, more than any doll I'd ever wanted, I wanted that camera. And I pitched a freaking fit for that camera. And the neighbor finally gave me the damn camera. And later I found out my mother slipped him a whole 50 cents for it. <laughs> And I went home, and the very first photo I took was of my little three-year-old sister, Emily. <laughs> and so then on, every year for Christmas, there'd be another camera under the tree. There'd be another photo accessory. And my sister, Emily, would sit there patiently <laughs> watching my dad explain to me how to use a camera again, f-stop, shutter speeds, and she would sit there and willingly be my model. And I would photograph her over and over again, and sometimes my cantankerous brother, Philip. <laughs> but she was the one that would let me photograph her over and over and over, even when everybody else was like, get the hell out of my face with that camera she would let me photograph her. And it was a way that connected us, even whenever we were teenagers and we had different friends and different ways of dressing and different music we liked. It was through a camera that we connected to each other. And as we grew older, I became a photojournalist and she ended up joining the Navy. And even though whenever we were apart, I would still photograph her. Surprise. Um, I ended up becoming a newspaper photographer. And I was a spot news photographer, which means that I would often get sent out to cover fires and floods and accidents. And I would drag my five-year-old along with me. <laughs> um, the newspaper editors didn't care that the five-year-old was along with me. Their mantra was, get the fucking shot. <laughs> Um, but the principal at my son's <laughs> Catholic school did seem to mind. <laughs> I get a call one day from her, and she tells me that the fire chief had come to talk to the kindergarten class that day, and that instead of my son saying, call 911 whenever they were asked what to do in a fire, he told everyone, you should grab the camera and the notebook and run. <laughs> so I thought maybe it was time to put down the camera for a short while and take a desk job as a photo editor. And it would give me steady hours and I would be looking at other people's pictures instead of my own. So flash forward six years later, and I land my dream job working at the St. Petersburg Times in Florida. And I am pretty excited about this because they're gonna let me photo edit and they're gonna let me be a photographer, but they're not gonna let me chase fires. So I am so psyched about this job and I am going to freaking rock it. And my sister is living in the Sunshine State at the time as well. So for a while, life is pretty good. And then I get this call at 3 a.m. a few weeks before Christmas. And it's the Department of Children and Families in Florida. And they tell me that I need to come to Pensacola immediately and pick up my two-year-old niece, Ashley, and my four-year-old nephew, Noah that my sister has been arrested for drugs and alcohol, and that my brother-in-law has been arrested for the same, as well as domestic violence. And if I do not take custody of these two kids, 
they're going to be placed immediately into foster care. So I get the kids. We come back to St. Pete. At this point, I have a two-year-old, a three-year-old, a four-year-old, a five-year-old, an 11-year-old, a husband working the overnight shift at the newspaper. I am suddenly dealing with two daycares, two schools, a myriad of social workers and lawyers, and the financial strain of having all of these people live with me as well as a sister that's dealing with alcoholism. And at this point, I had had no idea that it had gotten that bad. I had no idea that Emily had reached that point. And I was just on the cusp of starting to be a photographer again. And I was emotionally and physically drained, and I was sucking at it. Mm -hmm. And I got the worst evaluation I'd ever had in my life. I was always, always so good at everything I did. And I went home that evening after the kids were in bed, and I climbed under my desk, and I just cried for two hours. And I realized, I can't do this. And I had to go on family and medical leave. And I put my family over the work, and it was hard. And we ended up with my sister going back up to Florida. And eventually, she did get the kids back. And her and the kids moved in with my mom in Mississippi. And by this point, I was pretty done with Florida. And it ended up coming up to fantastic Washington, DC to work for the White House as a photo editor. And it wasn't as a photographer, but I was okay with that. I was a pretty good photo editor. And, um, and life was good again. And I got remarried in 2007, and we had just moved into our new house in Reston. And the phone kept ringing over and over and over again on a Saturday morning. And I picked it up, and it was my brother, Philip. And he told me that my sister Emily had died that night. And um, she had relapsed. And she had had small traces of drugs and alcohol in her system. But it was just enough to um, stop her breathing in the middle of the night. And I was absolutely devastated. I went through all the stages of grief. I was depressed. I was fucking angry at Emily for dying. I could not even hardly get out of bed. There was just nothing that would heal my broken heart. Until one day, I walked into our bedroom closet and I see a black dump key camera bag sitting there and I pulled it out and I'm sitting on the bed. It was my husband's old D100 digital cameras. I mean, these things were old. <laughs> and I charged the battery and I went out to take pictures. And it was like a balm over my heart. It was like picking up that camera was like I forgot about everything else for just a moment. And it was the first thing that had made me feel right since Emily died. And I started picking up the camera again and I started photographing other people's stories, their weddings, their babies, their celebrations, sometimes their funerals. And I started doing more photography and less photo editing. And somehow that started working into building myself a business. And this past year, I've taken over a million photos. <laughs> and I'm a photographer again. And I still miss photographing my little sister Emily. But picking up that camera again, just like I did when I was five, and putting it in my hands, and falling in love with photography again, that passion and emotion of photography, that, that healed my heart.
Mm-hmm.